All right, everybody. This is one of the last skills we're going to be developing today. You may want to take a minute when I'm done talking to pause this video. What we're going to be doing is finding the total resistance of this circuit. And we're going to assume that every one of these resistors is one ohm. I figured we might as well start with something far from easy, which will make the easy and regular seem easy. Does that make sense? Anyway, pause the video for a second so you can copy this puppy down, all right? And now you're back, maybe. I don't know. And here's the deal. Now, some of you will find this exceedingly easy and kind of like a puzzle to solve, and some of you will struggle with it, as with most topics. But the goal is to look for areas that are obviously series or parallel, and we focus on them as we slowly collapse the circuit down. So I'm going to start. I mean, if you want, you could pause and try and find some areas that you think are series or parallel. That might not be a bad idea. So pause it now if you haven't. And now you're back. So I'm going to start highlighting some of those things. So right away, I see these three here are in series. And if they're all one ohm resistors, well, we just add those in series. So that's one plus one plus one is three. That was easy. These two down here are in series. That's two. I don't know why I circled that. I don't like the circle. These two are in series. That's two. Now, some people may be looking at this diagonal, but when you think about it, the current comes in here, and then it splits. Some of it goes around this way, some of it goes up here, but then some of it splits again. So basically, these three are in parallel. In parallel, we do 1 over 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 equals 1 third. Over here, I see on the right that there are these two in series. And these two in parallel, again, that's just 1 over 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 equals 1 half. So I basically combined a lot of this circuit together, and now I have to redraw it. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to redraw this circuit, work my way around. This is 1. Now I'm going to replace the three resistors up here like right up there, with the equivalent resistance, which is one-third. It's going to come down here. We're going to have a two here. We're going to have a one here and back. Up here, we have a three and a two. Three and a two. And then on the side here, we have a two, and we have a one-half. And that goes back to here. So again, we do the same thing. Look for things that are obviously series or obviously parallel. If you're having trouble visualizing this, visualize the flow of current around the circuit. Where does it have to go through two or more resistors without breaking off or branching at a junction? And at what other points does it have to split in half or split in multiple ways at a junction? And that would be parallel. So again, give yourself a second, maybe pause the video, try and find some things that you think are series or parallel. Parallel. And now you're back, I assume. So right away, I see these two here are next to each other. They're in series. So that's just four thirds. You can make it 1.33 if you want. I'm just leaving it as four thirds for now. Then I look over here and I see that these two together, and I realize I should have brought a calculator, are in parallel. So that's one over. 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2, which is uh, shenanigans. I should have brought a calculator. All right. It shouldn't be tough math. What is that? 3, three 6 and 2, 6 is 5, 6. So that's 6 fifths or 1.2. I hope my math is correct. These two are also in parallel. So that's 1 over 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 half. Be careful here. A lot of people screw up the 1 over a fraction kind of thing. But that becomes 2, two and a half or 5 halves, if you will. And then 1 over that is 0 0.4. That's basically all I can do now. The most common misconception here is to say that the 1 the one-third, the two, and the one are in series, but that doesn't really make sense because once it reaches, the current reaches a junction here, 
it splits. So once there's a split, it can no longer be in series. It must be in parallel with something else. So I'm going to redraw this circuit. So we have a 1.33 here, a 2 here, a 1 here. Sorry, that 2 is kind of sloppy. And then up here we have a 1.2 and a 0.4. And a 0 0.4. Now, the most common wrong answer is to say that all the ones on the outside are in series. That is so far from correct. When the current reaches here, there's a junction. Once it splits, it's no longer in series. Something's in parallel. So you may want to take one second really quick and just think about there's only one move. There's only one move we can make here, and that's it. Do you see what is in series and what is in parallel? So pause the video, take a second, try and figure it out for yourself. And now that you're back, another very common wrong answer, by the way, is that these two are in parallel. That is very far from true. Okay, I'm just trying to point out some common mis misconceptions. For these two to be in parallel, the current must split and go into them. That's not what's happening here. The current's coming out of the source, going through the 1.33, and then splitting sometimes later. It is not splitting into the 1.33 and the 1. So if you figured it out, your only real move is this one right here. Those two are in series, which becomes 1.6, because we just add them. Now we have to redraw again. So I'm going to bring this over here. Because we're running out of space on my small computer screen. So redrawing, we have 1.33, we have a 2, we have a 1, and then we have a 1.6. Now some people ask, where should I draw that 1.6? Should I draw it here? Can I draw it here? Can I draw it here? That's totally up to you. I tend to draw it where I did because it kind of makes it look obvious. Now you only have one move you can make here. Hopefully you know which one that is. And let's see what color we got going on here. Look at this nice pink here. These two, they are in parallel. So that is 1 over 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1.6. Again, they're in parallel because the current comes out of the source and it splits at this junction. Some of it goes to the 1.6, some of it goes to the 2, and then it rejoins at this junction. So I'm going to put this in my calculator. Sorry about that. And I should have done that earlier. Plus 0.5. And I'm getting 0 0.89. I hope that's correct. So that equals 0 0.89. And then I'm going to redraw it one more time. Go up here. And we have source we have 1.33 we have 0 0.89 and we have the 1 so 1.33 0 0.89 and the 1 hopefully you could tell right away this should be pretty easy that these I'm running out of colors we'll go with brown these and brown not so hot are all in series with each other because the current must go through each of them and those you simply add so we have the 1.33, the 0.89, and the 1, and we get 3.22 ohms as our final answer for what is the total resistance of this circuit. So a couple other helpful hints. Usually when you get a circuit this big, you'll start collapsing it as we did in the first picture, but you'll notice when we get down to about... The third picture, which is right here, this one here, we basically have one resistor on each like side of a square, if you will. And usually when that happens, we work our way from the outside, the farthest part of the battery, which was the 1.2 and the 1.4, or excuse me, the 0.4. We work ourselves from that area, the blue area here, and kind of collapse it down towards the source as generally the pattern. Now, I anticipate a little bit of difficulty with this one. Uh, this was one of the, the, the tougher, this would be like a test-worthy problem, to be honest. The ones on the homework are much simpler than this, but I figured this gives us a lot of little things to practice along the way. 
So as always, I'll be holding office hours if you need them. And if you want to ask me about this, please do. I hope you're doing well. Please don't hesitate to ask questions. And that's about it. So take care of yourselves.